Hey, David Raffoff here with another Unity video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how to um, basically only ever have uh, one instance of a particular thing running and um, being able to reference that from anywhere in your app. So uh, this is called the singleton pattern and it's commonly used for things like managers. So, uh, you know, typically you would only want one manager for say like the players or for input or sound or whatever to exist in your app at a given time. And if somebody were to try to create a second instance of one of those things, uh, you would want to prevent that from happening. Um, and that, uh, that's really useful for, uh, sounds a good example. Like you wouldn't want somebody to try to, um, load two instances because you may not, uh, if you didn't prevent that, you could allow for things like two different um, <clears throat> like so songs or soundtracks or whatever playing in the background at the same time. Um, if you had two instances of your input manager, you could see really bizarre things happening where you're getting like double input reactions from players. So uh, anyway, it's a pretty common thing to need to do. Um, it It's helpful to know that... Um, it's still essentially creating a global way to access state. So um, it can be like a little divisive. So there's a, I mean, definitely a trade-off uh, to doing it because generally global state um, is not something you want, uh, but there are certain cases where it can be helpful. So anyway, it's always good to know kind of what the engineering um, trade-offs are on any technique that you use and pretty much any technique has um, some kind of trade-off. But anyway, for this uh, example, um, you can see down here below the um, camera, uh, kind of off off screen here. There's a couple thing, couple pieces of uh, UI, and uh, one of them is this dialog menu here, where you can see there's like a character's name and text. And this this uh, bit of UI is actually already set up with the singleton pattern, so only one dialog uh, menu or uh, UI or whatever can appear at a given time. But this thing next to it, it just, just contains a little bit of descriptive text that can appear above um, different sprites in the game. <coughs> um, that isn't set up this way yet. So I thought that that could be a good, um, uh, a good chance to kind of walk through how you would go about doing this. So again, the idea is um, with this game, at least at the moment, I only ever want to have one of these um, little pieces of text appearing. I think these are sometimes called uh, barkers. They're just like little things that appear above objects when you get close to them or interact with them. Um, so I only ever want to have one of these. Um, and just to kind of show you what it looks like at the moment, it's pretty simple and it just follows this enemy around and it'll stay positioned, um, centered above um, the enemy. But what I'd like to do is like, uh, eventually, you know, like say I went up to the sign here, I'd want to be able to show maybe a little piece of um, text above it that had a name or some directions or whatever. Um, and for the purposes of this example, I'm just going to have it move around when I pick up anything that's consumable. So uh, the adults in this game, when they pick up flowers, can get health. So I'm just going to have it appear above the flowers uh, when we interact with those. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, Stop sharing this and then I'm going to switch over to kind of show you how this works at the moment. So at the moment, you can ignore everything that's commented out here, uh, but the way this works, actually let me pop in Unity, it'll be easier to show. Uh, so I have a game object within my HUD canvas and it's called the tooltip and within the tooltip there's the panel which is like the black background. And then there's the text, which is the text that's going to appear on top of it. And you'll also notice my anchors are um, in the center of this, which is handy. Um, it'll save you from having to worry about like calculating a center for um, this bit of UI. And then here, there's a positioner script uh, attached to it uh, that has a target of enemy zero. And um, I just set that by dragging the enemy over um, to here. So... Uh, yeah, just kind of manually set that in the UI for now. So, yeah, so imagine, you know, we want to show it as we start consuming uh, items in the game. So we'll switch back over to the code. So at the moment, uh, all that positioner really does is uh, allow you to set a target through the UI. 
Um, it keeps track of an offset. Uh, so on every update that's called, and that's just part of the normal uh, Unity uh, cycle, I'm just gonna call update on all the uh, game objects behaviors. Uh, it's gonna call set position. And then that's basically gonna say, um, if you don't have a target, uh, just get out of here. So that means there's no game object set as target. If that target doesn't have a sprite render, um, it's also just gonna um, exit early. And if it does have a sprite render, it's gonna say set the position to uh, an updated position. Um, and that's gonna uh, use the target transforms position and the render. And all, basically all it's doing is it's setting it to the location of uh, the target and then um, lifting it up a little bit above it. So there's a Y offset to kind of raise the uh, text above whatever the target is. And um, so that's how it works at the moment. Um, so we don't really have to do a whole lot to um, make this pattern work. So uh, what uh, what we want to do is in our script when we're interacting, when the player's interacting with things, um, at the moment, all that, uh, all that I do when we're interacting with something is call this interact method. Uh, but just to keep this simple, like before we actually interact with it, um, cause a number of things can happen when we interact. So for now I'm just gonna, uh, handle the positioner before we get there. <clears throat> so what we want to be able to do is, um, look at the positioner class, which is available from anywhere and then say, Hey, give me the only instance of this thing that should ever exist. So give me, <clears throat> give me the one instance of positioner that exists in the game. And then I want to be able to set the target of that to, um, whatever the thing is that I just ran into. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we need to make some adjustments over here to make that work. So, um, the easiest part of this is now, um, you could, if you remember, we set target with a capital T and that means we have a, a property. So we need to add that property. So I just added a target property that, uh, has a getter that just returns target. And then the setter sets, um, target to be whatever the new value is that's coming in. And then immediately after that, before anything else happens, it sets the position of the text. And uh, the reason that's important is because um, the object we're interacting with can be destroyed. So I want to, I want to place that menu before um, we move any further ahead uh, so that if it is destroyed, at least um, that little bit of text is able to uh, be displayed. And I'll just go ahead and, uh, well, we could save that, but uh, I'll just keep moving along. Uh, so the other thing that's important is we're going to need a place on the class to store our um, single instance that we're going to allow to exist. So um, all we'll do there is add a public static positioner instance. And that's just saying uh, we want an instance that we can access off of class uh, from anywhere, but the static um, just means it's going to be on the class, not an instance. And then down here, um, we we basically when an instance uh, has its awake method called, which is just one of the Unity <coughs> lifecycle hooks, um, we want to say if the instance on the class hasn't been set yet, we want to set it to this instance. Um, so like the first time we make a positioner, um, it's going to just save that instance to the class in the instance, uh, field. And then, uh, the other thing we want to do, and this is where the singleton part comes in is we want to say, if somebody tries to add a second positioner, um, we want to be able to say the instance we have is different from the instance, um, this instance that we're in at the moment. And we don't want to allow a second instance to exist. So before anything else happens, um, we're just going to go ahead and destroy um, the second or uh, yeah, second instance. So this is where the singleton piece comes in. So you'll only ever have uh, at most uh, one instance set. Uh, and that's important because you don't want to have two or three because then if um, you'll, you, you don't need them essentially. Um, 
and that's the way to enforce it. So that's pretty much it. So at this point, if we are to run our game again, you'll see um, you'll see that the text is still appearing above the enemy. And then as we go and interact with things, uh, so I'm going to have the uh, player interact with the flowers there, you'll see that the text should just appear directly above the flowers. Um, you also notice that the game object there was destroyed and the, um, the text was able to appear before the, uh, the object was destroyed and get positioned in the right place, which is what we want. Uh, and then if I just move over and hit the next one, you'll see it happen again. Um, same thing here. So, um, yeah, so I mean, it's basically working as expected. Um, and again, this is the uh, singleton pattern and it's useful for when you um, need an instance of something globally accessible, but you don't want more than one of them. Um, and yeah, common uses for this are managers for different um, parts of your game uh, where you only need uh, one manager in existence at any moment. Uh, like I said, though, uh, relies on uh, keeping some global state around that you can reference directly through classes, and that um, has its trade-offs. So, uh, but anyway, I thought that this would be a good example to kind of show how to use um, this pattern and this technique. Um, and like uh, any technique, it has its trade-offs, so it's always important to just kind of keep that in mind. But yeah, thanks for uh, following along and watching this. And uh, maybe I'll post another video to um, just handle cleaning up this bit of UI too. Like it'd be nice if it um, disappeared after, uh, I don't know, a couple seconds or something. Um, it also doesn't make a lot of sense to show this above these consumable items. It probably makes more sense to show it over something like uh, this sign up here. But uh, anyway, I'll uh, worry about that in a future video. Uh, thanks for watching.